I'm Ray McMullen. My purpose today is to welcome you to the Walnut Valley Unified School District, tell you a little bit about its history and how it came to be. I came to the district in 1954 as a young eighth grade teacher, in the, teaching eighth grade kids. There were 26 of them. I taught them all subjects all day. I joined six other teachers in a school of 160 children, and that was the Walnut School District. Since that time, it has evolved greatly and become one of the nationally recognized districts in the nation. My purpose today is to give you a sense of what has happened during that intervening years and give you a chance to meet some important people who will tell you more about the district. So we'll go from place to place and give you a sense of what we're all about here in Walnut Valley. So let's climb on. It's been a wonderful 50 years in Walnut Valley, and um, yeah, I don't think there's a, a school district or, or an organization in the country um, that can have more pride uh, in, in, its, uh, in its school district than, than what our community has in the Walnut Valley Unified School District. I think we are so blessed and so fortunate uh, to have the people and the culture and the family feel and the emphasis on kids and our, our model of uh, kids first every student every day um, will continue to be around and it's it served our our students really well I think moving forward you'll continue to see that you'll see an emphasis on family you'll see an emphasis on um, the social emotional wellness of our students you'll see a continued emphasis on academic rigor and preparing kids for life after Walnut Valley um, and I think you'll you'll see uh, an emphasis on on kindness and how we treat each other and um, which will serve them well and will serve our, our, our society well moving forward. This campus is called the Ron Hochwald Academy. It became to be called that because it was named after the superintendent Ron Hochwald who was an extraordinary man. Uh, a very caring, a very extremely hard working superintendent. Uh, the first two years he was here, he visited every classroom, and at that time we had about 10,000 kids. So he visited every classroom and wrote a note to each of the teachers about what he'd seen. Because of that hard work and his legacy, we created a continuation high school, and that was then later replaced by the academies, which provides a variety of education, not only for the Walnut Valley School District, but for the area ROP and is a, a good place for lots of kids. For Ron, I'm not gonna cry. When he get angry? <laughs> okay. Uh, when we talk about the 50th anniversary of Walnut Valley, we have to include people who made the greatest impact. And Dr. Ron Hockwalt was one of those people. As superintendent, he always kept our moral and ethical compass pointing north, or true north. You know, sometimes today the world can be so mean-spirited, but Ron modeled, he was the picture of compassion, inclusiveness, and respect. Every year, Ron visited every classroom, and because he had such a personal connection with people, he wrote every teacher every year a personal letter, and they were astonished at how he could remember the most minute details about their family and their friends. And you know, after he passed away, it must have been months and sometimes years, teachers would still come up to me and share how they kept every one of his letters because they were so special in a file. You know, Dr. Hawkwell played a pivotal role in making Walnut Valley the flagship district uh, in California. I used to go to so many conferences, both, both local and state, and people just used to approach me and, and tell me how Ron made such a positive difference in their lives and how lucky I was to be under his leadership. But you know, Ron loved Walnut Valley. It was part of his soul, and he used to remind his leadership team almost daily that the success of Walnut Valley was dependent upon the success of our most at-risk child. And he used to tell us to always give people grace, to be inclusive, and never, ever make any child or adult feel like they don't matter. The great thing about Ron, Ron Hockwalt and his legacy in Walnut Valley is that 
every single person in the learning community and in the community at large had a seat and an important place at his table. And for this reason, Dr. Ron Hogwell will always be part of the heart of the Wallet Valley story. On this site, originally there was a, a Walnut Elementary School in a wooden building. And that building was torn down and replaced by a, a one of those white Spanish style stucco red tile roof building and four classrooms. It also had a cafeteria and a small auditorium. I taught here one semester and then was drafted and went in the Army. Korea was underway at that time and I was fortunate enough to be sent to Germany. Came back here, Cy Morris had sent me a contract for $4,000 to teach and compared to my Army salary, that was big money. We came back here and I taught the eighth grade and the sixth grade and the second grade and the third grade at different times over the next few years. And by the time I finished the eighth grade, the school had grown to about 200 kids and there were a full complement of teachers in all grade levels as well as kindergarten. It was a, it was begin, the district was beginning to grow as Sia Morris had anticipated from that tiny elementary school into something much larger, and we'll talk about that more as we go from place to place. Walnut Elementary School, is a, the new Walnut as we call it now, was built as a result of needing to move out of the old Walnut facility, which is the Hockwalt Academy, and creating a place for continuation high school students to attend. So we, cre we built the new Walnut Elementary and only used a portion of the, of the Morris design. But if you go inside, it was very similar to the interior of the Morris School. It was part of the plans of David Brown. David Brown was the second superintendent in the school district. He was a very forward thinker. He'd been superintendent in Blythe. He was a math major from Cal. He was a doctorate from UCLA been a bombardier in World War II, extraordinary man. And he was always trying to ensure that we provided an educational program that met the needs of our kids and would meet the needs for kids in the future. And the movement of Walnut L to that site was a reason for that. I, I was fortunate enough to work for Dave for 20 years and much of the, the vision that we have in Walnut Valley today as a result of his efforts when he was superintendent. Starting at Castle Rock, we had the, the good fortune of being welcomed by Marshall Manthorne, who was principal at the time. He was the principal you invited over for dinner, and he did come over for dinner. And every morning, my sisters and I would trek our way to the bus stop, and we had Mr. Ray, the bus driver, who looked like the Marlboro Man, pick us up, take us to school, and Gail would pick us right back up. She had this tall beehive, blonde beehive hairdo, and they were like our second family. They were there for us, my sisters, the good times and bad. And while at Castle Rock, that's where I met lifelong friends that are still um, in my life today. And at Castle Rock, it's like you walked amongst, you learned amongst the greats. Uh, Mr. Keeney, Mr. Thayer, uh, Nicole Rogers, uh, Jody Brown, and there is where we just became, we developed our identities, we became who we were. And um, I still remember one of my fondest memories is sitting in sixth grade with Diane Kemp and we watched The Challenger, uh, the fateful day of The Challenger, and it was at that moment that I saw the humanity of a teacher. A teacher that gives knowledge every day, but was there to foster love and just support us. And that's how my time always felt at Castle Rock. We were loved and carried through. So it was, it was hard to leave in sixth grade. We were also the last sixth grade class at Castle Rock, only to head on over to Chaparral. Castle Rock was the first school in the Diamond Bar area that we built. We opened here in portable classrooms and as the building was finally finalized, we moved into this about 1962 or 63. 
one Friday a month they had a big potluck and community club members and parents came from all over the district. When I began to teach, Nancy and I had been recently married and that was one good meal a month we got at the community potluck. Well, the community club idea moved when we opened Castle Rock School because you had a large quantity of very talented mothers whose husbands went off to work somewhere and they had all this ability and they didn't want to wash and dry dishes all day. So they came to the schools and began to volunteer. And they became an important part of the volunteer program within the community. They also raised a large amount of funds. Castle Rock raised enough money to provide an after-school recreation program for the students in the area just out of the money they had raised because there was no after-school recreation program in Diamond Bar at that time. They hired the staff and paid them. So community club, very important part of the Walnut School District history. I started as a volunteer in the community. I love working with kids. And so every day during the week, I would devote my time to go to their schools to help out wherever I can. And doing that, my son's sixth grade teacher, Mr. Keeney said, why don't you run for school board? And I said, I don't know anything about school board. He said, you know everything. You just don't know you know everything. So long story short, I ran for school board. And 34 years later, I'm still on the board. I love working in the community. I love volunteering. I think that's important. And that's a key to the success of our district. Having parents volunteer, being part of the district, so they feel like they have an ownership in it. And that's the key to the success of kids today. If you're involved, then they see their parents involved. I think education has a greater meaning when they see that. And we have a huge parent volunteer uh, in the community. It's called Community Club. Most districts have PTAs. We have what they call community clubs. And they're very devoted to each of the schools that they're at. And they do major support on buying things that we don't have the budget to buy. But that's important and that's key. And we have international days at some of the schools that that really celebrate cultures. I'm really proud of the fact that both of the high schools have all the different clubs and they make sure all the students are involved in a club. They don't want to see kids walk around and feel like they don't belong. Um, that's important too. So you have to make not only the community feel welcome, but you have to make the kids feel welcome also. So over the years, I have seen more and more involvement of our parents, more engaging as board members into um, understanding what it is required for each of the districts so we can go out and speak intelligent about what's going on in our district. We still rank high in the state. We still rank nationally very high. And so we're doing something right. And I'm proud of that and proud to be part of the Walnut Valley Unified School District. Suzanne School opened with nine classrooms in 1962. Barney Davis, who was the principal and opened the school, moved to Castle Rock to open that school and then I became the principal teacher at this site for the balance of the year. There were only nine, only nine classrooms on campus. The following year, we had 18 classrooms going. I also had kindergarten on campus, and Ida Marie Moltz was a brand new kindergarten teacher. And of course, I was a brand new school principal. So the opening day of kindergarten, we didn't think to have the parents put the children's addresses on their blouses or shirts. So the morning session ended. I got on the bus with Grace Estrada and we started taking the kids home. We suddenly ended up with two kids. We didn't know where they went. We drove around the track and we'd ask a little girl, is this where you live? And she'd say yes. And the little boy was, no she doesn't. She lives next to me. Where do you live? I don't know. So we went around the track a couple of times and finally two mothers had come out of the houses looking for their children and as a result we 
were able to have them. We found them their home. But Suzanne was a big part of my life. In fact, I planted a tree in my wife's name in the parking lot. Nancy, uh, played, obviously, we were married almost 64 years, so she played a huge part in my life, both personally as well as professionally. And when I had moved into personnel and was in the process of trying to develop a recruiting program as the district was growing, I was getting ready to go out of state and I had prepared a recruitment brochure and suddenly realized I didn't have a good logo. Nancy was a biological science uh, minor and art major at UCLA, so I got home that evening and I said, honey, I don't have a logo for the uh, brochure. So she sat down and designed the walnut tree logo that you see everywhere, including on my shirt. So it's, that logo has been there since 1968 as part of the district and her contribution to the total place too. I planted here in remembrance of my wife, Nancy. Uh, she passed away a little more than four years ago. And so I was able to obtain a, a large tree and my son and I came here with the grounds workers from Walnut Valley and we dug a hole and scattered a few of her ashes and planted a tree in her memory. Um, and they've been great as far as helping try to keep, take care of it. I thought this was in a good place because the buses come through, people come through all the time. And when it's in bloom, it's a lovely tree. It's Nancy's tree. My name is Helen Papadopoulos and I attended Evergreen Elementary and Suzanne Middle School and Walnut High School. I graduated in 1979 from Walnut High and I ended up starting and never leaving teaching at Suzanne Middle School. And I started as a sixth grade teacher and moved up to seventh and eighth and now I'm an eighth grade teacher and I teach drama and math. My favorite teacher was from Walnut High, Mr. Sismondo. He was my math teacher and I just I wanted to grow up and be just like him. And, you know, I hope that, you know, somehow, some way, I'm making him at least a little bit proud because that's, that's the one thing I wanted. I just wanted to be like him. He, not only did he teach math, but he connected with us on this other level. We knew about his family, we knew about his son, we knew that he liked to drink Dr. Pepper, we knew all of these amazing things about him and I just, I felt like he was more like a, a human rather than just, you know, teacher in front of the classroom and I feel like especially now, though that, that thing that Mr. Sismondo taught me all those years ago when I was at Walnut, when he was connecting with us, I think that's the thing that has just made this not work, not a job to me, but something where I can get up every morning and tell people, oh, I'm going to school today. And they're like, oh, why are you going to school? Oh, well, I'm a, I'm a teacher. <laughs> oh, you're going to work. No, 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 I'm going to school. I, I have never ever said in the 36, 36 years, maybe, I think, I stopped counting, um, that I've been teaching that I was going to school and it's not, it doesn't feel like a job. It just feels like it's something, it, it's just the thing that I do. It's who I am. It's not what I do. It's who I am. Collegewood School was the first school built in the city of Walnut and it served the Collegewood Tract, which is the area just around it. My wife and I bought our first home in that in this area and the children only came to college with only around the surrounding areas because it was there were no other nearby houses before the school was open we had children as i mentioned earlier going to suzanne on double sessions and walnut on double sessions my daughter was in the fourth grade in double sessions here my son was in the first grade in double sessions in walnut and then they both, when it opened in the middle of the year, they came here on single session. So it was one of the new things, one of the new schools in a new district. My family moved to um, 
the Walnut area in 1962. And so um, there was no um, elementary school in Collegewood at that time. So um, we ended up needing to um, ride the bus to Walnut Elementary School, which is now the Ron Hawkwalt Academies. And um, of course, my, I was only in first grade at that time. And so um, I can just remember so clearly how um, the bus was taking us down the winding country roads and you see the cows grazing on the side. And um, I was at Walnut Elementary as a student for first, second, and third grade. And then the exciting part of uh, third grade, uh, we were able to move to our neighborhood school in Collegewood and opened up the school in 1965. So, um, the exciting part of that was being able to help our teachers uh, move into the classrooms and set it up. We were able to select the, um, in the Collegewood colors and the Collegewood mascot, and um, just a really great time there to be able to start the school. Just lots and lots of fun. Um, and we'd play dodgeball and all the, you know, Red Rover, Red Rover, and all those fun games that you don't really play much anymore today. But. Um, just a great, great experience. And um, I have to say that um, the two teachers that I had there, the one um, in third grade, Mrs. Janie Browning, and in sixth grade, Mr. Gene Garno, um, they totally influenced my life and wanted me to help me to want to become a teacher because they were they had such a great influence on me. And so I knew at that point that I wanted to be like them and I wanted to make an impact, a positive impact on students like they had on me and I worked really hard to um, become a teacher and then just so very exciting that um, I was able to come back and be a teacher at college with the school where I attended and so that's very special to me. So my time at college was something that was really special to me because it was a time where I learned a lot of things and especially from my like favorite teacher, my fourth grade teacher, Mr. Jones. He was someone who taught me a lot actually. He taught me like he was the first male teacher I actually had and like one of my first like male father figures in a sense. And so he kind of taught me how to like be like a young adult at such a young age and it helped me shape like who I am now. And in addition to that, like I made a lot of friends and we spent a lot of time like whether it was doing projects at recess, doing homework, hanging out after school and we just built bonds that like and friendships that like lasted until now actually. Even though it was a long time ago, I actually remember a lot of my experience at Evergreen pretty vividly. All the teachers were super sweet, and I feel like, because um, my mom was one of those classroom moms, so I spent a lot of time with my teachers, so there I was able to develop some really strong connections. And on top of that, because I've been in the district for so long, a lot of my friends that I've made in elementary school are still my friends today, which is something that I really appreciate as attending something this long. So, for example, I have a friend that I've had since first grade, and now we're just super close. So that's something that I really treasure and one of the things that I really enjoyed about being at Evergreen is how much I was able to explore my interests even though I was just like really young I was able to do a bunch of art projects where I discovered my love for art and at the same time I was able to kind of start working into leadership as a class representative. When I was at Evergreen, I started as a first grader because I, um, I lived in Fresno for my kindergarten year and then I started at Evergreen as a first grader. And it was just great. My fondest memory of Evergreen is um, the year it snowed in Diamond Bar. And we were, we were sitting in the classroom and for some reason we looked outside, somebody said snow and every single one of the classes just emptied out and we all ran out and we were in the snow and our principal who was Truman Collins at that time got over the loudspeaker and said everybody needs to go back into their classrooms and our teachers just kind of looked at each other like yeah that's gonna happen <laughs> there's snow I mean come on so it was that was really great I really I just I really enjoyed it I have very fond memories the Evergreen Elementary track team is where it all started for me as a seven-year-old running track. I can remember, I can almost still hear it in my head going to the local track meet at Walnut High School when it was still a dirt track. And, and, and hearing 19, or, uh, 1982 boys, you know, 1982 boys line up on the track and I can just 
hear it in my head and I remember the smells and the excitement and the nervousness and what it felt like to learn to compete, to learn to be a good sportsman. Um, the parents and coaches that volunteered on the upper field at Evergreen, you had to go up this long ramp to get to the upper field at Evergreen where we ran and practiced. And um, I just remember all of that, um, all of my competitive nature, the way that I learned to have discipline and to push through challenges all goes back to that. And I, I still, if I go home to my parents' house, I will still pop in the VHS of those old track meets and I'll almost tear up because it's so deeply emotional and deeply connected to me. And I don't think I have it anymore, but for a long time I still had my um, Evergreen Elementary Walkathon um, Lime Green Fanny Pack because I loved it so much when I ran track. It's still somewhere around my parents' house, I think. Um, it's probably worth some money now, right? It's some throwback 80s gear, but um, there's just, there's a, there's a deep personal connection to sport that was catalyzed there as well. The Bay High School was the second school district, second school built in the city of Walnut. Uh, it was named after the street Vehar, which was the preference of the superintendent, Cy Morris, name all the schools after the streets on which they were located. It um, was open to the kindergarten through sixth grade school. The, the kids who came here came, uh, many of them came from the housing track, which is just east of the school. Unfortunately, there was a large open space area that had not been subdivided, so the children had to come across a large expanse of vacant ground. The parents were so afraid that something would happen to their children that the district ended up hiring a path guard, and that path guard would walk the length of that path from the houses to the other houses to ensure that the children were safe. One important person in the city, history of the city of Walnut and the community is June Wentworth. June was on the personnel commission district. She was on the city council. She was mayor of the city of Walnut. And what, June Wentworth made a major contribution to the community, but her first position was president of the community club here at Vehar. We're at Walnut High School. Walnut High School opened in 1968. Their first graduating class was then in 1970. My daughter was in the first class to go all the way through. She enrolled here as a freshman in 1968 and graduated in 1972. So it was a high school, the only high school in the district. All of the children in Diamond Bar had to come here. So eventually, a school that had been built for 1,600 kids was housing about 3,000. We had nine period days. We had, it was, this campus was just overloaded. The facilities were overtaxed. And then we opened Diamond Bar High School and moved about 1,100 kids off campus. The community around here was concerned because they were sure that the, Walt, the Diamond Bar was going to become the new high school and Walnut High was going to be the old wreck. So they joined together under the leadership of a couple of contractors and with district funds and the funds they raised, over the course of the summer, they re before school opened, they refurbished it. I came up here and I was watching the football team roll out sod in the interior grass areas. The contractors had their cement crews building platters. I spent several weekends painting doors and windows along with the superintendent and other community members. So that by the time the school opened in September, it really looked nice. It looked like it had, had been refurbished and upkept. We were judicious in the movement of the staff because we wanted to be sure we had maintained a balance of quality staff at both schools. And we had done that. And so the new high school in Diamond Bar opened with a good staff, but the good staff also stayed in Walnut in a refurbished campus, a real effort with the community. One of the teachers who came here was a coach, head coach by the name of Ken Gunn. Ken was a very successful football coach at Walnut High. Moved from there into administration. He picked up his doctorate uh, from Laverne in the course of time and eventually became principal here and changed the school, which had been a good school, made it into an outstanding school. 
use Ken as an example of what leadership can do in the right places. And Walnut High, under his leadership, become a national blue ribbon school, was recognized for the quality of its program throughout the state. Ken Gunn Stadium is named after Ken and a fitting tribute for all he contributed here. Very influential on many of us was Dr. Ken Gunn. And he was the principal at the time and uh, just a tremendous leader. He inspired people, he had vision, he talked people into doing things that they didn't even know that they could do. And if you think about Walnut High School today, it's because of what Ken did uh, in the community and at that school. And I'll give you a quick example. I was about 27 years old, I was the athletic director, probably the first time that I was really a leader. And I remember I would go into his office and I would share problems and things I was trying to deal with. And I really wanted him just to give me the answer on how to fix it. And he wouldn't do that. He leaned back in his chair and he started asking me all these questions. And I'm like, why are you asking me these questions? Just tell me what you think I should do. But what I realized over time is he was coaching me, he was mentoring me, he was guiding me, he was getting me to problem solve. And I didn't even realize that. I remember a couple years into the job, he leaned back and we'd had this same conversation. And he would say, you know, when you sit in this chair one day, you need to be ready to handle these type of things. And I'm thinking, what do you mean sit in that chair? The last thing I want to do is become a high school principal. You're out of your tree. And he kept kind of pushing on that and pushing on that. And then about 15 years later, I'm sitting in that same chair at that same desk with some other young gun sitting on the other side of the desk. And I'm finding myself doing the exact same thing. And I fast forward 30 years later, and, and now as a superintendent, uh, those skills that I've learned from him, I'm doing today with hundreds of people on a daily basis. So you think about those relationships, you think about those connections, that's what Walnut High School has done for me. The legacy of Walnut High School sports definitely carries through us because our coaches tell us different stories about different teams, coaches, players, and we always strive to be just like them or even better. It's definitely something that I'm proud of to be a part of because not only are we learning about different people's legacies, but we're also leaving our own legacy. My name is Corey Wicks. I'm one of the uh, instrumental music directors at Walnut High School here in WVUSD. Um, this is my 25th year at Walnut High School. Uh, it's my 28th year of teaching. Um, and by the numbers, you can tell that I decided to stay uh, once I came here. Um, Walnut Valley School District means a lot to me and my family. When I first started working here, I didn't have any children. And now all three of my boys have gone through Suzanne Middle School and Walnut High School and graduated. And um, they're all in the music or entertainment uh, business. Two of them are going to be high school and middle school music teachers, which I'm really excited about. Um, as a parent, you feel like you can trust your kids um, with this district, which is why there's so many you know, people that transfer in to be in this district. And if you tell other people that you teach at Walnut Valley School District, um, you know, and you know other teachers in other districts, they, they know our reputation and um, they, they've heard all the stories and they're all true. <laughs> My approach is to first make every student feel valued and feel like they can accomplish anything. Um, and which is why it, it doesn't matter if you've never ever even seen a flute, we'll give you one and, and help you learn how to play it. And other, other than that, our educational goal is to make sure that um, our students are able, if they want to, to keep music an enriching part of their life uh, for, for the rest of their lives. We have kids that excelled so highly in band and orchestra and all the other arts. Um, and you see they become cops and firefighters and teachers. A lot of them come back and teach in this district, which, which tells you how much this community is loved. Um, doctors, lawyers, um, you know, music teachers like my kids and some of our other uh, kids and um, just see, being able to see them accomplish all those things for me is, is what makes everything worth it. We're here at the C.J. Morris School. Uh, this is an open space school uh, designed to allow for ease of movement of teachers and from kids from place to place. Because it was open space, the sound of classrooms was important. And they had a, pol a protocol where if your class was loud, someone would send you a red pencil and let you know that they were just too loud. 
We had one teacher who was having difficulties controlling her class, and it wasn't too long after a while they were sending her boxes of red pencil because the class was so noisy they couldn't run their own. So Morris School has been an important part of the district, and it was, again, named after Cy Morris. Cy was an interesting superintendent. He grew with the district uh, when it was in still a of the Walnut School District, it was an elementary district, kindergarten through eight. He oversaw the building of Suzanne and Collegewood in the early stages of growth. But he had a very pragmatic look at education. His concern was, or his watchword was, is it good for kids, is it good for staff, then it's the right decision to make. And that kind of established the framework for the district even through the day, the focus upon staff and on kids and staff is so very important. I was blessed to work with Cy for a number of years as we, I came back and worked at Suzanne as a teacher and then became the principal. I, he recruited me to the central office to be the third administrator in the place. I'm indebted to him for lots of reasons. He brought me back out of the Army, told me I was going to have a good future here, and when I retired some 40 years later, he was right. I had been moved from a classroom teacher to assistant superintendent of human resources in, in a district of what was originally less than 200 to 14,000 kids in kindergarten through grade 12. So I'm very indebted to Cy Morris. He was my mentor and a dear friend. So my sisters and I attended C.J. Morris. I was in Miss Gilbert's second and third combo class. Um, I didn't speak any English. Um, we came from Taipei, which is a very urban environment. So coming into what's more of a, not rural, but like suburban environment was really different. And um, we dressed really differently. I don't think I owned a pair of jeans or a t-shirt until I was in middle school because we dressed up to go to school. There weren't as many Mandarin speakers and or Asian people as there are now uh, in Walnut Valley. Um, the ESL program really wasn't as developed either, but I think um, my sisters and I had such great teachers um, at CJ, Suzanne, and Walnut High School that um, we did well. And my youngest, they started a dual language Mandarin immersion program at Walnut Elementary. And it's sort of, I guess, ironic that I started out at Walnut Valley speaking Mandarin and not speaking English. And now my son is going to Walnut L so he can learn Mandarin and English at the same time. So I think it's so great that Walnut Valley offers these opportunities to have a second language, you know, from kindergarten on all the way that they can take that all the way to high school. We're visiting Chaparral. Chaparral was uh, the middle school built in Diamond Bar. It eased the load from that of Suzanne. Uh, it was a very thankful opening for the parents as well as the kids who lived in Diamond Bar. They no longer had that long and sometimes riotous bus ride to Suzanne School. So the bus drivers were happy and the kids and parents were happy because their children weren't being put off the bus. It was built in an open space design and when you could walk in the front door when it was under construction, you could see the entire inside of the facility. Again, it made the movement of students easier and it provided opportunities for teachers to work in teams. The focal point in the school as you entered was the library because that was at that time a critical point of any middle school was access to reference. So Chaparral was an outstanding new middle school that was built by the Unified School District. At Chaparral is really where we learned rigor. We learned habits of success and we were so supported by teachers like Mrs. O'Dwyer, Mrs. DeBusco, Mr. Shiroto, uh, Mr. Hawes, all of them just had a profound effect on our lives. And it was at that moment, I remember being in sixth grade with Diane McKee, social studies. And it was at that moment, I knew I wanted to be a teacher because of her. Gets me choked up even thinking about it. And a year later, Mr. Jardine, the PE teacher said, here's a basketball. 
I want you to start playing. I had never touched a basketball in my life. And he has no idea that at that moment he gave me that ball. I later went to play basketball and get a Fulbright scholarship to a Division I um, college to play basketball. So there were just so many teacher mentors, Ms. Malazzi, uh, I could go on and on, who were so inspiring to us and raised us up for us to see our full potential. And, um, you know, even dealing with us back then, <laughs> uh, we, I'm sure we caused some gray hair, but they really helped us define who we were and um, the catalyst for where we would go in our future. In 1980, the Unified School District opened Maple Hill. It was the third elementary school in the Diamond Bar area. It also was an open space design that we reused the plans from the Morris Elementary School at Maple Hill. The uh, concept allowed children to move smoothly within the confines of the building and teachers to team teach readily. Uh, it was another excellent use of the building plans in the district. My name is Rachel Scott. I went to Maple Hill Elementary School, Chaparral Middle School, and graduated from Diamond Bar High School. And I am now living in Washington, D.C. And I'm a congressional correspondent for ABC News. I will always say that Maple Hill Elementary School really laid the foundation for what I'm doing now. It was the first place where I really fell in love with public speaking. And it was because my fourth grade elementary school teacher, uh, Miss Morris, who is now the principal actually of the elementary school, she pushed me out of my comfort zone. She gave me this opportunity to have the lead role in the school play. And at the time I was nervous, I was shy, I didn't think that I could do it. Uh, but she believed in me and she believed that I could. And I'm so happy that she pushed me and believed in me for that role because it really was the first time that I fell in love with public speaking. And while I'm not acting <laughs> per se, uh, now in my role every single day, uh, being on air, talking to millions of viewers, explaining the news, explaining what happens, I mean, all of those public speaking skills, the foundation of falling in love with writing, um, I gained that from Maple Hill Elementary School. And she is one of the few teachers that I actually remember from my time at Maple Hill. But I will always say that I credit her uh, for giving me the passion that I have now to pursue a career in journalism. And I think it really goes to show you just how far someone believing in you can go. Uh, just how far one teacher can really impact the life of one student. And here I am, decades later, <laughs> still talking about Miss Morris, still talking about how she impacted me, how she impacted my life, how she shaped the career that I have now. And I am just so immensely grateful uh, that I had a teacher like her, uh, and I owe, I owe her so much. I wanna give my kids, my students, the experience that my sisters and I had in Walnut Valley. I want them to be handed that basketball. I want them to be with that teacher that inspires them. Um, that's what I live for every single day. And of course, at Maple Hill, we have our motto, kind heart, strong mind, brave spirit, hawk pride. Those are the things we're trying to cultivate in our students. But every single time after a long day, I sit down at my desk and I say, did I give the kids the opportunities that I was bestowed growing up in Walnut Valley? That is what I wake up to do every single morning. We want to give our kids those same opportunities that we had and hopefully one day they'll boomerang back and they'll be sitting here 100, on the 100th anniversary talking about things that um, really impacted their life for the better. We opened Dimebar High School in 1982, about 1,100 kids. It was a big deal for the city of Diamond Bar. It was the only high school in the area. And so the city people congregated around it. Walt Holmes was the principal, and he was an outstanding principal in that he focused on kids. He made a requirement that every teacher in the school have something to do after school with kids. That would be very difficult in this day and age, but Walt pulled it off here. He was, he was on top of everything that happened within the school. As you know, the Walt Home Stadium was named after him. 
I, an important part of Walt Holmes's character was he was really, as I said, focused on kids. And he had been employed and had an office at Walnut High while this school was being finished under construction. And Walt met with every child, every student who was going to be attending Diamond Bar High School. He met with every one of them that were at Walnut as well as those at Chaparral before they came here and started the new school. So it was that important to him to get to know as many of them as he could. Uh, hi, my name is Jason Wright. Um, I went to Evergreen Elementary School, Chaparral Middle School, and Diamond Bar High School. I graduated in the year 2000. I'm currently the president of the Washington football team, an NFL franchise based in Washington, D.C. And uh, before that, I was a partner at a management consulting firm. And before that, I was a running back in the NFL for about seven years with the uh, Atlanta Falcons, Cleveland Browns, and Arizona Cardinals. We had a unique situation when I was playing football at Diamond Bar where we had a shared set of values and norms and we knew how to be accountable, integrous people. Um, we took responsibility for our mistakes. We held a high bar for one another. And then that led to the other ones. We were incredibly disciplined. We were incredibly disciplined as a group. And, um, and you felt like you were a part of something that had a great legacy that went back decades. And you almost felt an increased amount of pressure from that. And that's actually something that I still benefit from today. When you are 15, 16, 17 years old and you're learning to operate in the public eye, and we were very much in the public eye at the time. I think our games were like 10,000 people, you know? Um, and, 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 and being able to perform under that level of pressure creates a muscle in you that becomes very useful later in life, whether it's in sports or in business or as a parent. When the eyes are on you, when the pressure moment is there, you know how to calm yourself. You know how to think about your fundamentals. You know how to release the things that you can't control. And those are things that I think all of us who came through the program at that time, and even if it's on a smaller scale now, those who continue to come through the program today, you develop that ability as an athlete, whether it's women's soccer, track and field, football, wrestling, whatever it is. You develop that muscle to um, bring your best under pressure, bounce back when your best is not enough, and to treat and build up the people around you as a team to support you in either scenario. I think those are the more powerful things that the sports program at Diamond Bar did do and I assume continues to do. Hi, my name is Steve Acciani. I'm director of instrumental music at Diamond Bar High School. Um, I've spent my entire teaching career um, teaching in the Walnut Valley School District. I started out at, at South Point Middle School where I taught for 18 years. Last 14 years, I've been up at Diamond Bar High School. Um, I've also been involved coaching football, basketball, baseball, track, helping with robotics, uh, pretty much anything that I could do in the district I've, uh, I've had the fortune of doing. The Walnut Valley School District uh, from day one has had a commitment to providing great opportunities for all kids and that has, has definitely benefited the performing arts. They look for developing well-rounded students and they know that that artistic side is critical uh, to kids being able to express themselves. They've allowed um, no matter what's been going on um, financially, um, um, in any things like that in the district, they've always understood that it's about the enrichment of the human spirit. So they've provided maybe the most well-rounded uh, performing arts uh, program um, anywhere in Southern California. And what they're able to do for the kids and allow us to do with the kids um, is just unprecedented. I think one of the great things about being in this community is I think I get more from the students in the community than I'm, than I'm even able to give. I, I can remember an, a, a particular student that, that was a life-changing experience getting to know her. Um, a few years back we had a student that moved in from New York her sophomore year. Her name was Miso Kwok. And very talented, incredibly nice kid, um, completely blind. And she came in and we sat down that very first day and she let me know what she needed. She said, this is the kind of person that I wanna be. These are the things that I wanna do. Can you help me with this? And she taught me um, to see beyond limitations, to see what was possible. So Miso wanted to do marching band. 
So she said, help us figure out a way to do this. So we worked through that and figured out how she could do the marching band. The next year she said, I wanna march in the Rose Parade. So we, we found a way through the help of our, uh, the district and our site administration where we could get, get her assistance. And she was able to be in one of the Rose Parade honor bands and do that. Um, and she was able to do fantastic things as a player. And it was always about not what was gonna limit her, but how we could provide to let her be the best she could be. And she guided us to those things. It was, it was really special. Uh, she just recently graduated from Harvard and is, is uh, somebody that truly had a profound impact on us. And there's hundreds of stories like that. Uh, Miso is just one that, that we'll probably never forget. Some of the lessons that I like took away from high school, um, my high school experience from Diamond Bar High School is like the importance of um, teamwork and um, also uh, like working through different challenges. And um, I think being a part of um, band uh, really taught me like what it means to uh, be thinking about others and um, think working towards like a goal with other people, um, not just by myself. And I think that's something um, that. Uh, can be really beneficial in many, many different settings um, as an adult, um, adult in working in different uh, settings. Um, and also I uh, just have this kind of atmosphere of like trying to do better um, and being with peers who are like, everyone is so uh, passionate and brilliant. And so I think uh, sometimes being in that environment like felt like it was stressful, but also uh, realizing that, that everyone is just doing their best and so um, being encouraged to also work hard I think that was really helpful and um, to this day I can um, like attribute uh, some of my work ethic from my uh, the ha habits that I was able to co cultivate from high school. The best thing about going to Dime Bar High School is actually all of your peers. You are surrounded by greatness. I just remember being so inspired by my fellow students uh, who were starting clubs, who were volunteering, who were helping the community, who were extremely smart but wanted to collaborate on different assignments. And I think that it is the faculty that brews that sort of collective energy. Uh, it is the teachers who push students to work together, who challenge each other to help one another instead of wanting to break each other down. Uh, it was also at Diamond Bar High School where I continued to lean into leadership and it is where I joined USB. I became the vice president uh, of, of the high school uh, my, my junior and senior year. Uh, it is where I really did fall in love with writing, uh, taking English courses and, and discovering that journalism was a passion that I really wanted to pursue. And I remember telling my teachers about wanting to pursue journalism or something in public speaking. And I just remember them being so excited for me and thinking of opportunities and ways that I can get more involved or practice public speaking. And so that then transformed to me speaking at public rallies and I would host the rallies. I would be the MC for the different rallies and homecoming events. Uh, but it was the faculty there that again, once again, believed that I could do it. Well, my passion for mathematics uh, started very young, <laughs> but in the classroom, not everybody has the same passion for mathematics as I had. So what I tried to do, and much of this uh, was came from other people I met, especially Charles Sismondo, and that is every kid who comes to your class has to feel that they can be successful. Not every kid is going to be an engineer. Not every kid is going to do any, I mean, most of the kids aren't necessarily going to major in math, but I want them to feel that they can be successful. And I wanted them to want to be in my classroom. That was very important. Every day, I wanted them to want to be there. Whether they were a math genius or not. And uh, that's how it all started. It started at Walnut High School and it just continued and blossomed at Diamond Bar High School.
In a short period of time, we built Quail Summit, South Point, and Westoff. Westoff being the last school built within the, within the school district, uh, named after Leonard Westoff. And you'll notice that all the rest of the schools, with the exception of the Morris School, are named after streets. But Leonard Westoff was a venerated citizen of the community of Walnut, been on the Walnut School Board way back before it was a tiny district, the La Puente Union High School Board. He led the, the fight to become a unified school district on the city council, mayor of the city of Walnut, just a, a class individual who made a major contribution to the city of Walnut. So Westhoff was named after him as part of the triad of schools that were built during that period of time. Quail Summit, when I came, uh, and it started with Dr. Uh, Carolyn Haugen, um, and she just created this culture that was warm, inviting, loving, embracing the whole child, also with high expectations. And everyone was always welcome. And I would say that culture has remained uh, ever since. And we still uh, embrace everyone. And uh, it's funny, it's, um, a long time ago, we, I was, we were at a school carnival and I was standing right there with Larry Redinger. And um, he looked and his children went to Quail. And he said, you know, this school has a lot of heart. And I thought that is the best compliment I think I've ever heard. A heart for kids, a heart for learning, a heart for others. And I thought that is wonderful. And it just kind of stuck um, that that's who we are. And that's why, why our motto is Quest Summit, at the school with the heart, because that really is um, who we are. When I attended South Point, um, I got to experience a lot more creative freedom. So the first part is just being able to choose my schedule. That was already something that I really enjoyed because I got to choose the classes that I liked. And one of my most favorable parts of South Point was how I was able to develop this kind of bond with my teachers. So not only did it teach me lessons in like the subject they were required to, but I got to learn a lot of life lessons from them that I still carry on to today. And on top of that, of course, the friendships and the bonds that I've created, I really, really like treasure and I still carry on to today. And one of my favorite memories from South Point Middle School would be the band trips that we went on. Um, even though we weren't able to like bring our parents, that's kind of the fun part where you get to be a lot of, or you get to be independent and discover, let's say New York or Washington DC and hang out with your friends. And so those are the memories that I'll always treasure forever. As we wind up our 50 year anniversary of the Walnut Valley Unified School District and we've had a chance to see the different schools and heard about the different facets of the operation of the school district, which now totals about 14,000 children in grades kindergarten through 12. We are reminded, I'm reminded of Cy Morris's criteria for making decisions, which was if it's good for kids and good for staff, then it's a good decision for us to be made. That is carried forward through that 50 year period through Dave Brown and Ron Hockwell and the other superintendents until you reach today, which is kids first, every student, every day, which is the current motto of the school district and is reflected in the many things they do, both in the operational as well as the educational field. For 67 years, it has been in addition to my professional home, it's been also my personal home in so many ways. My children attended the school, I have lived in the community all of these years, so it's more than, has been more than just a job. I currently am still involved in the school district after 67 years and still enjoying what I do to support it. So it's a very important part of my life. If I had to summarize in two words what Walnut Valley, I think, typifies, it's quality and care. And those two words seem to me have been the essence of both its treatment of working with kids and its working with staff over the years. If I had to summarize how I feel about my experience in Walnut Valley, is I would say it is life-changing. If I had to summarize my time at Wanna Valley with one word, it would be impactful. If I had to sum up how the district makes me feel, I would say 
compassion. If I were to choose one word that would sum up my adventures in Walnut Valley, I would have to use the word pride. Um, I'm very, very proud of the experiences that I've had, the people that I've met, the adventures that I've gone on, and the district is just a wonderful place to be. And um, I'm very, very proud of everybody in it, all the programs, all the people, and again, just proud to be a part of this whole, whole thing. One singular word that would uh, kind of encompass how I feel about this amazing school district, I think it would be appreciation. I just, you know, as a, as a parent myself, I see what our students get to experience on a daily basis. Um, I see the commitment that our teachers and our principals and our, our support staff have uh, working for our kids. And, and to, to be able to serve in my position and see all of this happen on a regular basis, I just, I, I never get tired of it and I, um, I never lose uh, the high level of appreciation that I have um, for this, this organization. If I were to pick one word to describe Walnut Valley, it's family. And, and I'm very fortunate that my family has been a huge part of this district. My wife's a school psychologist in the district. Um, all three of my children went through all the programs here. And there was never a time where it didn't feel like everybody belonged, that, that it was this entire group of, of committed professionals and community members and, and administrators all designed to make my family um, thrive. So if I were to pick a word, it's family. The first word that always comes to my mind when I think of Walnut Valley is family. And all of the things that come along with family, you know, sometimes you don't always get along, but you're always there for each other. And our families feel that, our kids feel that, all of our staff members feel that. And that's I think that's why we get here and we never leave. <laughs> no one wants to leave because you'd be, be leaving your family. So the one word that sums up Walnut Valley is family. If I could pick one word uh, for Walnut Valley, it would be community. I think it also comes from our tagline, all means all. And it does include all, parents, teachers, staff, um, administrators, everybody. I think. Walnut Valley does try to be a, a very community-oriented, inclusive um, environment for not only our children, but as parents, we feel welcome and that our voice matters. To come up with one word that would describe my feelings about certainly my time at uh, Walnut Valley Unified and Diamond Bar, my first thing is excitement. It was the excitement that motivated everybody. At least it motivated me to motivate kids to fulfill their dream, to fulfill their goals, whatever their goals were going to be. If I had to describe my experience at Walnut Valley Unified School District in one word, I would say it's basically my home. And it may sound cheesy, but I've grown up in this district from really when I was like seven. And so I was able to grow up around the same group of friends that I know I'll carry with me into the future. I was able to meet a bunch of amazing teachers that taught me not only like the subjects that now I excel in, but also a bunch of life lessons that I will always carry with me. And when I come back and visit, I'll always find this place as home because it's not only a place I've attended every single day of my life, but it's also a place that's filled with a bunch of people that I will always love. One word that for me that describes one of the valley and it would probably be respect. And I think about the respect that I have for the organization, the respect for the people, for the community, for the school system. Uh, I have a lot of respect of the commitment that everyone makes to make sure that every student that walks through the door in Walnut Valley is going to be successful in their own way. And, and, and those uh, attributes probably have given me the work ethic to make sure that in no matter what job I hold, 
I can hold that same accountability for myself as well. So I would probably sum it up with respect. If I had to pick one word to describe Walnut Valley, uh, it would be, definitely be family. Uh, it's a big family made up of the community, the teachers, the students, uh, the school district administration, that all is really just one um, cohesive body. And uh, yeah, it's a big, big family. The one word that I would use to, to describe Walnut Valley is family. Um, ever since the beginning, we have been a family, and that culture has remained throughout the years. And when that family works together, it is a beautiful unit. And when you really think about a family, there's a lot of heart there, and there's heart in our district, and we really are a district with a heart. Um, a heart for learning, a heart for kids, a heart for educators, and a heart for families. Enlightening. I think my, my intellectual curiosity was birthed and um, it's almost like the light went on. The light went on about what's possible. I could see the possibilities in the world um, and that intellectual curiosity has guided it almost every step since. I think one word that comes to mind for uh, thinking about my experience as a student in the Walnut Valley Unified School District um, is that it, it was um, it was formative. Uh, my experience in Diamond Bar High School uh, was really important in um, thinking about like my academic trajectory and also just uh, me developing as a person. I think so for that reason, I choose choose the word formative. If I had to pick one word that represents Walnut Valley Unified School District, I would say community. Um, um, and when I look back at my time uh, in elementary school, middle school, and high school, I just smile. And I think that that is really uh, embodies what the community means to me and what the district um, represents and, and how much it has changed and, and influenced my life. I'm really, I'm really thankful for all the people that I've gotten to meet and everyone that I've been able to stay in touch with. If there was one word that I would select that would embody my experience in Walnut Valley from kindergarten all the way up to being a principal, it would be care. Care that you get from the people you work with, from the administration, the principals, the custodial team, to the lunch attendants. Everybody at Walnut Valley just cares. We care about kids, we care about each other, we care about well-being. But that would be a word that I think as I go back and I just reminisce about all those times walking down the hallways of Chaparral and Diamond Bar and Behar and Castle Rock, I always felt cared for. Life-changing. Impactful. Compassion. Pride. Appreciation. Family. Community. Excitement. Respect. Family. Care. Enlightening. Family. Formative. Community. Family. Home.